Hello again everybody. The next car that you selected to view is an extremely rare Oldsmobile. This is a 1969 W30. Numbers match complete. Motor, trans, rear end. This car is also an original low mileage car and it's all original. Now we did a lot of work to this car and we've done it over the period of the last five months. The video that we used to have up on this particular car, Jeremy is going to turn it around. You're seeing the beginning of the finished product, but at the end of the video that I'm doing now, when you watch it, you're going to see the, the first part of the video of when the car first arrived here. So we just got it back. We did a lot of work to it to get it in the condition that it's in. Now, this is, is an original car. Uh, it has all of its numbers matching components, the motor, the transmission, the rear end, as I stated before. It's got the original um, distributor in it, which is a, a part that's very hard to come by. It's kind of like having the LS6. These are very special cars. The LS6 454 has a special distributor. So does this car. Uh, this is a Ramrod 400, 360 horse engine, and these are very potent, very fast cars that were on the street. Now, if you watch the recent Barrett Jackson auction that took place uh, at the end of January, you would know if you followed that auction that there was three uh, Oldsmobiles that I could compare this to. There was a 1969 W32 convertible. Now, we had a W32 hardtop that we sold last fall. Uh, a W32 is not quite um, as uh, high performance and as special as the W30. The W32 was built with a milder cam and different heads in order to be able to equip the cars with air conditioning. Uh, so uh, the W30s were a whole different animal. They had different heads and a bigger cam and they were conservatively rated at the horsepower that they did have. But nevertheless, the W32 convertible sold for $98,000. Now there was two 67 W30s, and I know that there was a little bit different animals than the, the 69, but still it shows that the rise of the rare W30 cars, and this is a super rare car. You can find a lot more 70, 71, and 72 W30s all day long before you're ever gonna find one of these. That's how rare these cars are. There's probably uh, you, you probably could, I know right now, you can't even find a hundred of these cars for sale. I don't even know where uh, 50 would be at. I don't even think there's 20 out there that, that are in circulation right now. These are extremely, extremely rare cars. The Oldsmobiles are now coming up because they don't make them anymore and people are starting to look at these cars for highly collectible investments and this is one of them. Now this car uh, as I was saying before, I'm going to get back to the, the two 1967 cars that sold at Barrett-Jackson. Uh, one sold for $108,000, the other one sold for, I believe, $90,000, somewhere in that area. So, and these are, I'm talking hard tops, I'm not talking convertible. The 69 W32, that was a convertible. The 267s, they were hard top cars. So, you can see how much of a rise that there is in these particular type of cars. This is a fantastic investment for someone to get into that has the foresight to listen to what I'm telling you. If you want to make money, here's your opportunity. If you don't want to make money and you just want to get a driver and play with it, that's one thing. But if you're looking to get into an investment muscle car, there's none better in the United States today than to buy than this car because this car could double your money in less than a year or two years. So listen to what I'm telling you. I've been doing this for 27 years and uh, I've never been wrong before. I know this market uh, just like I do the inside palm of my hand because this is what I've done for a living 100% since 1978. So this is something you, you need to listen to what I'm telling you about. If you want a great investment muscle car, this is the car to get. This car has all of its history back to the original owner. We have a complete title history to it. We even know the original salesman at the car dealership that sold this car. You don't get too many cars that you can have that kind of documentation with. This one has it. This is an 18,000 mile original car. It has original bumpers, chrome, stainless. It's not a redone car. We had paint issues that we had to do. We took care of that. It has uh, excellent paint, but it doesn't have 1,000 point show quality paint. 
has an excellent interior, but it does not have original uh, 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 brand new uh, factory type interior in it, okay? So uh, when you're looking at it, there's no rips, there's no tears. It's, it's a excellent original interior. The dashboard is crisp and clean. You look at all the gauges on it. You look at the pads for the clutch and brake pedal and the steering wheel. It's all just uh, shows and reflects that this is a true 18,000 mile car. We have the title search. We have the documentation. We have all the other histories of the owners that had this car prior to this so that we know all of that. It has the right D heads on it. That's something that uh, is very important on these cars. So all the parts that are very hard to find is all here with this particular car. This is an extremely rare car. It's an extremely uh, rare opportunity that you don't get a chance today to look into an investment muscle car that could possibly double its money within the next two or three years. Now, Jeremy can show you here, it's kind of neat too. All the W30s had the red ender fender wells. Um, that's kind of neat. When you saw these cars out on the street and you were a street racer, and even if you didn't see the decals that said W30 because some of the guys took that stuff off because they wanted to race these cars and street race, they didn't want people to know what they had under the hood. This was a dead giveaway. If you see these red fender wells, you knew you were dealing with a car that was a high performance uh, factory type race motor. That's what these engines were in here. They were, they were done right from the factory to put out a lot of horsepower. Um, they were out on the streets, uh, they won a lot of street races, and they, they, back in the day when people actually bought these cars to race them, it wasn't always just going to the drag strip with them. You heard that old saying, you know, win on Sunday, sell on Monday. Well, that was true in a, a lot of different situations, but street racing, and I did a lot of it in my time, I raced for money out on the streets. That's what a lot of guys did. I used to race nothing but sleepers, and that's the way I liked it because I could win races and make a lot of money. Our friend here, Jimmy Sons, who was with the Shadows of Night, he had a Hemi Dart, but before that he had a 440 Dart. He used to race it on the street. Both of those cars he won a lot of money with. That's what people did back in the 60s when you bought these cars. You uh, street raced them. That was part of the era of the muscle car era, what they were all about, is to the uh, real high-end muscle cars, to street race them, and make a little money while you did that and enjoy it and have a good time. So now I'm going to turn you over to Jeremy. He's going to go through. We did a complete, beautiful engine bay restoration on this car. He's going to show you that in detail. Ed's going to take some more photographs of it. He's going to, Jeremy's going to go through, show you the interior on the car. He's going to show you the trunk and go completely around the car. If you ha have any requests for any information, give Ed a call at 847 526 5950. He can give you more photographs if you desire, or he can give you a copy of some of the information as far as the documentation that we have and fax it to you. So now I'm going to turn you over to Jeremy, and he's going to have a, a little lengthy time to, to show you this. And remember, at the end of this video, you're going to see the first video that we did on the car when it first arrived here. So stick around. I think you're going to enjoy it. This is a piece of muscle car history from the 60s. This is a rare 1969 Olds Cutlass 442 W30 four-speed car. Four-speed car. Well, here it is. We've been waiting for this car for quite a while and it's finally back home. I probably handle at least half a dozen or so calls for this car a week. Well, here's what everyone's been waiting for. Let's walk around this low mile. It's 18,000 miles or so. W30. Beautiful paint. Oh, there's a part of our one of our walls of rock and roll stuff. Just about as good as looking at it directly. Looking extremely clean. And as you see, it's in the bumper there. It's got, it's got the proper bumper with the cutout for the trumpet exhaust. Just a beautiful paint job. This has the gray or silver. I guess they're silver stripes. Let's pop the hood. 
and there's some better lighting. Yeah, they did a magnificent job here. The hood blanket's beautiful, as is the hood itself. Non-powered brakes. Wait, let's check out the engine here. There's the D. We'll go over to the other side. And once again, there's the D. It's immaculate under this hood here. Very clean, straightforward engine. The Rocket 400. Well, let's take a look on the inside. Got the lights set up inside now. Looking in the back seat. Beautiful red interior. Functioning dome light. There's the keys. As Tony said, pedals have a little wear, but not a whole lot. About 20,000 miles worth. Wait, what's he got? 18,568. Well, it doesn't exactly look like it's stock factory, but there it is, we built with equalizer and all. And there's the 442 insignia on the glove box. And the headliner is in excellent immaculate condition. And it's got the tick-tock tack here. Heck, let's see what it sounds like. We can do this. Functional. Okay, well while we're at it, let's check out the trunk. It smells pretty good too. Just slightly rich. Box from an alternator. Means they probably replaced it. There's the electric antenna. Jack spare jack handle. Otherwise immaculate. Let's night shot this. Looking quite nice. So these are these look like the original labels here on the on the deck lid. And the light here works. Cool. And the soft seal here is nice and soft. Excellent. Beautiful car. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Oh, when Tony was talking about Jimmy Sands from the Shadows of Night, before he got into his Mopar with the Hemi Dart and the 440 Dart, he had a 69 Olds 442. It was a powder blue, I believe. And that had a factory blueprint engine in it. And he drove that for a good long time until Mr. Norm made him a deal he couldn't refuse. But for now, here is this one. 69 W30. You've been waiting for it for a while, and it's back. Probably not gonna be around too long, though. one last side shot here. Now we'll kick over to the other video which we had originally where we had two of these W30s side by side. Hello again everybody. The next cars that you selected to view on ClassicMuscleCars.com is two very rare very unique cars. 
Now these are 1969 W34 speed cars, extremely rare cars. If you know your history about Oldsmobiles, and Oldsmobiles unfortunately are no longer made by General Motors Corporation, these are at the height of performance years in the muscle cars is when these cars were created. Now the W30s are 400, 360 horse cars. Uh, they're what I would consider underrated cars because they were very special. The engines in these cars were actually hand assembled at the assembly line. Now everybody's going to talk, I know this, I know that, this story, this, that, and the other. I've been in business 26 years. It's not the first W30 I've had, but I'm going to tell you that I haven't had a lot because these cars are very rare. I'm standing in front of two. This is two of the only real W30s together in the country that I know of right now. Now, when they did build these cars at the factory, as I said, these were that special that they had to hand assemble the engine in these cars. So they were different. They have different heads, different carb, different distributor. All the components and parts that went into these engines were special. The W32, for example, which was the 400 350 horse, was 10 horsepower less. It was a whole lot different because that engine was designed to be able to run with an air conditioning system. These were not. These are the beginning of high performance era like the 70, the year later, LS6 Chevelle, or the 70 428, or 429, I'm sorry, Super Cobra Jet. So that's how these cars came about. You know, Oldsmobile had set back in the 60s and watched all of the muscle cars that were coming out of production, and they were kind of behind the eight ball. The problem was, everybody thought, it's an Oldsmobile, it must be your daddy or your grandfather's car, truly. So they decided they want to get some butt kicking performance out on the street. So that's why these cars got stepped up in terms of the performance that they had and what they are known for. In 1970, they came back out with the W30 and the 31s and the same in 71 and 72, but these cars were really some of the most unique that Oldsmobile ever created. They have a fantastic Ram Air system which you can see up underneath the bumpers. They're very unique and only distinct to the W30 cars. And uh, Jeremy can show you that in a little bit in detail when he goes around and shows you this car. Now both of these cars have horse shifters in them. That's from the factory. They both have 6,000 RPM tax. They're both W30 400, 360 horsepower engines. This one is a numbers match motor. This car has 18,000 miles on it. We got this car in, we have to do a lot of work to get this car into the condition that this one's in. I'm not talking about rust, it's not a rusty car. It's an 18,000 mile car that had sit for a long time. This one's a 45,000 mile car. This car was in storage for about 17 or 18 years. We know the history on both of these cars. This particular car, we know the history all the way back to day one to the dealership that sold it and also the original owner that owned the car. We have paperwork on both of these cars. So both of these cars are right. These are two original 69 W30 cars. Very important, they're very rare, they're very hard to find. So this one is a factory black car, black vinyl top, black interior, white stripe. This one is a black car, silver stripes, red interior. So they're unique in that respect, but they're both black cars. This one has a power antenna in back. This one has a power antenna in back. They both have power steering. This one has an under dash eight track. This one does not. They're both bucket seat console cars. So they are closely optioned. Uh, and they're a little bit different in the fact that this one uh, is an 18,000 mile car and this one is a 45,000 mile car but yet this one has a lot more documentation on it. This one has good documentation in the original line sheet but this one we know the owner history all the way back to day one. This one we know for about the last 18 to 20 years. Now when these cars after they were built and they were out on the streets uh, a lot of these cars got blown up. I mean, Oldsmobiles were not like uh, 
Chevy products, for example, for the engines because if you blew up a Chevy motor, it was easy to get one. These are very unique motors. Again, they were hand-assembled, high-performance motors on the factory. They would absolutely, literally take these cars, pull them off the assembly line, bring them on the side to hand-assemble the engine and drop it down in it. That's why they were only built in the Michigan plant. The W32s, for example, they could be built in any plant because they had those on the shelf. Order came in, W32, okay, go into the uh, warehouse, pull out the W32 motor, drop it in the car. Not so with these. These are very special cars. They had to be completely uh, looked at in a different respect when they got an order on the assembly line. So they're very unique. The uh, also, uh, I wanted to say with this particular car, uh, the paint that's on this one uh, is probably, I think, 17, 18, 19 years old, somewhere in that uh, time frame. Uh, we've got this car very nicely detailed. This is more of an original car than it is a restored car. We have a CD with uh, photographs on this car where we completely took this car apart so that we could look inside it to see what it was all about and it is absolutely like day one from the factory in there. It's one of the cleanest ones you're ever going to find. This one has had a little bit of body work in the quarter on the passenger side. We're going to take care of that. We're going to straighten it out in our restoration shop and then we're going to have to redo the paint on this car. We've got to do some interior work in this car. We have to do uh, in extensive detailing under the hood. This is not as detailed as this car is here. But when we get this project finished, Jeremy will show you the finished product on this car. This is what we do at this company. We take cars, we take good cars to start with, we run them through our restoration process, and we get these cars to the best of our ability. But now that does not mean that they're new, folks. No one in the whole wide world sells a new car that is 30 plus years old but I sell some of the best that I can bring to this company and sell to the public. And I'm very proud of that, and that's what we're known for for the 26 years that we have been in business at Northern Illinois Classic Auto Brokers and ClassicMuscleCars.com. Now, while we're on the subject, and we talked about this in another video that Jeremy and I did earlier today, I want to warn everyone that there's a lot of internet scams going on. You have to watch what you're doing. There's a lot of auction scams going on. People think they're getting a great deal. They wire money or they send money and it's history, it's gone. You have to really watch what you're doing today. These cars now, all muscle cars, all muscle cars have been brought up in terms of value and held in such high esteem that they are now uh, cars that are, are getting involved in a lot of fraud and, and a, lot of, uh, a lot of different issues. So you have to know what you're buying, number one, but you have to know who you're buying it from. We've been in business 26 years. We're a registered dealer in the state of Illinois, and we have had our dealer license here since 1984. That's a big difference. If you're buying from a reputable dealer anywhere in the United States and he is a registered dealer in the state, he falls under the laws of the state that he is doing business in. Very important. We are having customers and people we do appraisals for and people who know people call us up. They're getting ripped off for tens of thousands of dollars. They're not buying the car that they thought that they were buying or they got the car and they bought it on an auction and it got to them and it was just an absolute rolling pile of junk. So I can't make it any plainer. If you're going to get into an investment car, if you're going to get into a muscle car, buy it from someone that you can pick up the phone and talk to them the day after you get your car. That's very important. So now I'm going to turn you over to Jeremy. I'm going to let him go around and show you this car a little bit in detail. I'm going to let him show you this car before it's done. You need to come back and see it when we finish it. You won't believe the work that we do. I guarantee you this car will look as nice, if not as nice or nicer, than the one I am standing next to, which is a car that we are ready now to sell at Northern Illinois Classic Auto Brokers. If you need any more information, give that a call, 847-526-5950. We have a lot of paperwork on this car. We have a lot of paperwork here. Ed really knows his stuff. He's done a lot of research on these cars because we brought these cars in here. And you know what? I just want to say this. Everybody is a so-called expert. Well, you know what? Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one, okay? 
I've been in business for 26 years, and if I tell you both these cars are right, the reputation of my company is on the line here. They are both W30 cars. I will guarantee it, or you will get your money back. Boy, this is a rare sight indeed. Two of them, count them, two of them side by side. Let's have a look at this one. What I'm going to do is go back and forth between the cars to let you see what's cooking with them. Let's go inside first. Let's have a look in here. Fuel, temp, and oil gauge. Speedo reading 45, 426. And the, uh, actually the tack goes, well, red line's at six. The TikTok tack. This one has the AM with the 8-track below. It's the Hurst 4-speed. See if I can get that to show the 4. There's the 442. A little hard to get, get the good contrast on that. But it is a Hurst shifter. Beautiful black interior. in back. There's the other license plate. That's the uh, rear defroster through the back deck. Back in those days they blew air on the back window. Let's take a look at the other car. Red interior. It's got the uh, same three gauges. This one is, uh, well, it's reading 18554 on it. And once again, the uh, tick tock tack with a red line at six. This one, someone has put an in dash cassette unit. This one has the same 442. First shifter and the interior on this one. Now, mind you, this is before it's going anywhere for detailing. Not terrible. This one does not have the rear defroster. Let's look under the hood. And under the hood, we got the uh, red fender walls here. There's the uh, ram air coming from the uh, scoop here in the front. Up to the air cleaner on both sides here. This one uh, needs a little engine compartment detailing. I have no clue where the casting numbers are on these engines, otherwise I'd kind of try and zoom in there. Firing order. There's something down there. Three nine six zero oh, two six G it looks like. Let's take a look at the uh, other one, the clean one. Much nicer. This has, once again, the red inner fender walls here. Let's see what this says here. 39602G. So, well, whatever that is, that number is the same between the two. Not a clue what it is, though. 
this one is much cleaner beautiful actually I've seen some of the photos from before it was um, it was definitely a 30 plus year old car let's just go around both of them here Keyed wheels there. This one, of course, has the black vinyl top. I will check out the trunk later on, too. Power antenna thing. All right, let's check out its cousin here. These wheels are similar wheels. Rally kind of wheels. These have, these are not painted, or these are color keyed. But then again, silver versus the silver stripe, maybe that's how it goes. Who knows? That's not my forte. The trumpet exhaust in the back, and if you look at the back bumper there, it's got the uh, it's cut out in the bumper for the exhaust. Let's go take a look at the other one just for the heck of it, because we can. Yes, indeed, you got the same deal there. Continuing right along here. Let's continue looking at both of these cars. Do the comparison. Kind of like comparison shopping. Paint on this one is a little faded, but not bad. And needs a little paint work on this side. But Tony had mentioned that, I believe. Let's get the keys on this one here. One with that's that's with the red interior. Let's look in the trunk. Power antenna. Let's turn the night shot on. This is not terrible on the inside here. distributor the box that says starter really has a starter in it we have yet another of these color keyed wheels except this one is color keyed for a yellow car okay well at least it's got a spare let's return the keys And grab the other ones. Much nicer, cleaner. Power antenna. That was latched down, so it's really hard to see what that is underneath there. Both beautiful cars. Let's take a look at under the engine. Whoa. Let's take a look under the hood of both of these cars. First, we'll start with this one, the one that uh, just came in that needs a little detailing. You see the uh, red inner fender walls.
Oh wow, we've got them both outside. Let's take a good look under the hoods. This is the one that just came in. It needs some detailing work. As you can see, it's got the red inner fenders. The nice gold colored Oldsmobile black. Now here's the number. What is this? 396026G. Okay, whatever that is, it's right behind the water pump there. Let's see if we see anything here. It's supposed to be back in here somewhere. D. Alrighty. Non-power brakes, non-power steering. On this car, much cleaner, we can see a lot better. And back in there somewhere, there's a D. This one's got the hood light. This one doesn't. Let's take a look at rear ends. And as you can see, this is a 12 bolt. Now let's go check out the other car. This one's got a little dust on it. Now this one. Can we see it there? It's a lot of light, but it is a 12 bolt. All right, we'll let them speak for themselves.